Disney Girl and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my predictions for the Coco collection. So we have received puzzle pieces in our actual games on Instagram and on Facebook and we have been trying to piece them together to figure out what could be coming next to Disney Magic Kingdom's game. So I'm, I've kind of put together obviously the stained glass which you know included those puzzle pieces so I've kind of gathered them all and uh, this is what apparently the stained glass is going to look like. It's a little bit different than how they usually do it but I do think that it uh, is the stained glass for Coco. Now I know there's been a lot of sort of mixed feelings or reactions to this. My initial thought was going to be Pocahontas because of the compass which we do see around the outside. That to me was like very very obvious. I've already done my Pocahontas prediction so if you guys want to check that out uh, there will be a link in the description below which you guys can obviously watch if you haven't seen it already. I did that back I believe like June July so I, uh, yeah, it might be a little bit hard to find, so that's why it's in um, in the description below. Now, I've also put it as one of my videos on my channel page, so you guys can actually check it out there too. Um, if you know, again, you don't see it in the description, it is there though. But again, like I have a couple of links down there. Okay, so the stained glass. Let's talk about that. The music notes definitely point to Coco. However, the compass refers, to, in my opinion, to Pocahontas. We've talked about it quite a bit in the last live stream that I did. Uh, yesterday and we kind of came up with it being Coco. Again, Coco doesn't seem to have any sort of compass in it though, again, which is still making some of you guys believe that it is going to be Pocahontas, but I feel like my kind of ideas have changed a little bit uh, based off of that middle puzzle piece, which was released to us actually yesterday, so just over 24 hours ago. Uh, usually DMK doesn't post on Instagram on a Saturday, but they did, and the middle puzzle piece was yes a little cryptic coordinates hmm <laughs> yeah okay so I tried sort of following this along roughly in my actual DMK game and it really just takes me if I'm correct it sort of guides me over into a cursed area in the actual kingdom guess what guys that cursed area in the kingdom um yeah don't think so because the DMK said they weren't going to be releasing any more land to us so for a couple more updates so I don't think it is going to be that um but yeah, if that was the case, I would have said, oh, there's a bend there on the water, so maybe that's River Bend for Pocahontas. But if you actually type it into Google, guys, which obviously a lot of us did yesterday, um, there are coordinates. If you put those coordinates into Google, guess what? It takes you to the Mexican Pavilion in Disney World, Florida. So guess what, guys? You know, I feel Coco is is really the collection that we should be thinking about uh, for sure based off of those coordinates and stuff. Mexico Pavilion actually includes um, Miguel actually as one of the characters that comes and sings and plays guitar and stuff in the actual Disney park. So I, I really think that we are kind of looking at uh, Coco as being the next collection. So that's my thought. Obviously, feel free to add your own thoughts in the comment section below. But we will know soon enough anyways. All right, so let's just kind of go through how these limited time events work kind of briefly, especially if you guys are kind of newer uh, Kingdomers. So um, these limited time events, they usually last about 26 days. We get some new characters, attractions, concessions, and even decorations. So obviously every event is a little bit different, guys. Like for example, the Finding Nemo slash Dory limited time event, we didn't even get any decorations. Uh, so it is possible that we won't see any, but I somehow think that this collection definitely deserves its own unique decorations. There are a lot that they can do and especially because the attractions I feel are going to be a little bit limited with this event and I will talk to you about that a, a little bit later and my reasons why it, I've been having so much trouble with coming up with attractions for this. I think literally I've been stuck like the last uh, 24 hours for sure on this and maybe this was even why I didn't post my predictions a little sooner for this it was because the attractions were just literally blowing my mind. Um, so anyways, the limited time event, seven characters is usually what we get for sure. And two of those characters are going to be premium. So I will be sharing with you my ideas on sort of the direction of the storyline, what those premium characters will be. Usually the first premium character though is released on the first day and is 200 gems. Or you can purchase it in a bundle for real money, which will include either character tokens for that character to level up to a two or three, or it could include a concession stand or 
whatever. There'll be many different options. Uh, there has been many different options in the past um, how they've presented this. So we'll just kind of have to wait and see. So again, seven new characters most likely will be added to the kingdom during this limited time event. Now, once the event is over, those characters, they do go into legendary chests. So let's say you're a small baby kingdom and unfortunately you just don't uh, quite have the right amount of characters to help you out with currency or maybe you're just too busy with life stuff and can't collect all of them. Maybe even if there's a costume in this event, uh, then you know you might not even be able to get that and that's totally fine. You will have a chance a little bit later on during um, either a tower challenge or as I said during uh, you know a time where they do release these legendary chests. So for example um, During this limited time event, which I am assuming Coco is gonna be a limited time event because the amount of characters that are part of this uh, Movie and stuff there are a lot of characters that they can definitely use I think that they're gonna do this as a limited time event. I will talk about it being a uh, permanent content update just because that has been requested but I will spend very very little time on that in this video so again the legendary chests uh, will feature characters and costumes and all that kind of fun stuff at a later date so for this one for example if you guys didn't actually participate in the Alice in Wonderland limited time event maybe you haven't gotten any of the characters from the tower challenges or maybe you're just starting the game as like as of like a month or two ago you maybe don't have any of those characters so if Alice in Wonderland, which is what I'm predicting, is going to be used as a secondary storyline um, in this limited time event, then that will give you guys the opportunity to collect those characters, attractions, concessions, decorations, all that kind of fun stuff throughout the limited time event. So it does mean those legendary chests for Alice in Wonderland would last the entire limited time event. So it gives you guys time to save up your gems if you want to open them with gems. There are 60 gems or else you can purchase them with uh, a bundle with real money. So in my country it's $13.99. It will sort of depend on where you are in the world in terms of prices for those but you'll get six legendary chests um, in that chest pack and you are guaranteed one legendary or epic item uh, from your pack of six. Yes, your six pack. So it's it's actually quite cool. It's a really great way to uh, expand on your collections and, and get some really great stuff. So um, yeah, anyways, in the past we've used, for example, the Lion King, we've used Aladdin, um, we've used Winnie the Pooh. There are a lot of different collections and stuff that will be featured throughout limited time events and tower challenges and stuff. So don't worry if you aren't able to get all the characters. They will be available at a later time. Okay, so let's go ahead here and talk a little bit about Coco. So Coco um, is more of a modern, I guess, Disney movie. It is a Disney Pixar movie. So this is actually going to be our third sort of, I guess, uh, Disney Pixar event this year. Now, we did have an expansion with Toy Story. And the reason why I'm calling that even an event is because we had Bo Peep's um, Toy Story 4 costume appear in leaderboard events. So again, we still had an expansion with Disney Pixar collections this year from Toy Story 4. Um, we added some characters and even attractions and stuff like that. Also, uh, we just had in September, we had Finding Nemo slash Dory. So that combined uh, Disney Pixar characters again. And now if they add Coco, that'll be the third one. So I know the first half of the year, we really didn't see much of Disney Pixar, but now the second half, we we really have. So it is, uh, it is quite cool um, that we will be expanding on that Disney Pixar collection. Because I know there are some of you guys that just love the, the Disney like films just because you love the anime of Pixar which is totally fine I mean I love Disney and I love how Pixar does their animations so I mean I I just love all of it anyways so I know some of you guys will be a little bit more excited for this and maybe some of you will be like uh. and I even know some of you guys haven't even seen this movie before so um, it is a very very good movie I love it there's a lot of great songs in it a lot of great colors it's probably one of my favorite sort of things about it is again all the bright colors sort of throughout uh, the entire film I, I really really enjoy it and it is a lot about family which I again really enjoy sort of that storyline based around uh, Miguel learning I think how to appreciate and enjoy being part of a family uh, just as much as following your own dreams in life so yeah Coco to sum it up you guys need to watch it especially if it is gonna be a limited time event uh, 
uh, for October, definitely. So when would this be happening, guys? The limited time event is most likely going to start between the 16th and 18th of October. The reason for that is, is because the legendary chest for Alice in Wonderland is on October the 18th, and usually that means the secondary storyline is usually about 24, 48 hours after the event starts. You will be getting that chest. In the past, it's how they've done things that Alice in Wonderland, in this case, or legendary chest for the secondary storyline, that starts a couple of days into the actual event so that's why I think it's going to start probably around uh, the 16th of October so yeah anyways super exciting it is coming up really really fast so yeah really really excited about that so we'll probably be finding out more this week actually about the update so make sure you guys stay tuned um, on the channel to obviously find out more about uh, yeah all the expansions to Disney Magic Kingdom's game. So if you guys are enjoying this video so far obviously don't forget to give it a big Mickey thumbs up before we dive into the characters. Yes, let's talk about the characters because I know all of us are very, very excited to talk about this. So, Coco characters. So, I am uh, going to be addressing seven of them. Now, I'll also be talking to you guys about a couple of them that I think that will be Tower Challenge characters a little bit later. But, yeah, it could kind of depend on how the storyline goes, who they will add, and I will explain why as I go along here. So the first character I'm going to talk about is going to be the premium character. And I went with this character because I think it would be great for this, the first character that we actually collect for. Um, I think that these two would be a great pairing. So... I am actually going to say Pepita will be the very first premium character. Now, again, why Pepita? Well, Spirit Guide 4, yes, Mama Imelda. So Mama Imelda's Spirit Guide is Pepita. So I think that would be really great if uh, we sort of started off the dialogue for everybody with the event and had Mama Imelda because I think she's, she's a really great one. And yeah. Really excited. I think she should be the first one here in the kingdom since she was the one having trouble crossing the bridge in the first place. Uh, yeah, to go and visit the living. So I think it would be kind of cool if we sort of switch roles here a little bit. So yes, Pepita, first premium, 200 gems, and then Mama Imelda as being the first character that we collect for. Because we have seen characters like uh, Cinna, and we have even seen... Uh, Eudora, so like I know that Mama Imelda isn't the mother, so we could see obviously Miguel's mom, but somehow I don't think we're going to be seeing her maybe for the limited time event, but again, it is possible later, so I think maybe we will start with Mama Imelda for the storyline, which would lead us right into the second character, and I think this character would be great if we could get him early on, and that is Hector, because he did have such a big role in the Coco film, I feel like we need to have him. He's hilarious. He'll provide great dialogue. And I think a lot of us will be very, very excited to add the two of them together kind of right away um, in the limited time event. So that is sort of my thought there. Um, so if we're counting Pepita as being kind of that first character there, then we'll go into Mama Imelda and then we will have Hector. So that will take us into where the direction goes after Hector. Yes, very, very difficult decision here. Very difficult. I feel like it could go one of two ways. I feel like maybe we will either add Abuelita. So that is Coco's daughter. So Coco's, okay, yeah, this is where the storyline, if you guys haven't seen the movie, you guys might be like, okay, who are these people? So um, if we go back to Mama Imelda and Hector, their daughter is Mama Coco. Mama Coco is... Um, She's, I guess, Abolita's mom. So then Abolita is Miguel's, I guess, grandmother. So again, this is where it kind of gets a little bit crazy, but pretty much we're looking at Coco. If they add Mama Coco, the only thing is I don't know if they'll have her as um, 
being alive in the wheelchair or whether she will be dead and she'll be a skeleton appearance because then she'd actually be able to walk around the kingdom. We did see that towards the end of the movie, but most of the movie she sits in a wheelchair and doesn't really say anything. Um, so I do feel like this could go a couple of different ways. I think Abuelita would have a lot more dialogue, so that's why I kind of think they would add her. But it is possible that Mama Coco, because obviously she's so important in a lot of ways, like that's why the movie is called Coco. <laughs> so um, yeah, maybe though that would make Mama Coco would be a great character for a tower challenge and stuff so it'll kind of depend on the storyline direction now if they do add abuelita it wouldn't be a bad idea to have dante as the next premium so next premium being dante dante it's possible he could have two different appearances or just a costume so i don't know though if he gets a costume if that would make him uh, a premium character though and then having two animals as premiums well I'm not totally sure if they will do that either. So we could be seeing a little bit of a twist there in terms of premium characters and, and direction, obviously, of the storyline. But I really liked my idea of having Pepita, Mama Imelda, and Hector to kind of start us off the first couple of days of the event. I think it would just give us like a lot, a lot of excitement and everything, which I think a lot of us really need um, sort of straight away. Um, so anyways, Dante is a sort of a, a stray dog, but does sort of get adopted by Miguel. And naturally, Miguel, we will get him in this event 150%. It's just a matter of when, whether he's going to be the last character or second last in my mind. I don't think they'll start the event with Miguel because I feel like if Miguel and Dante are kind of presented first and... I don't know how much people will participate with the rest of the event, to be honest, because I think, like, Miguel is just such a big part. If you get him too early, then I feel like most people get the first character and just give up. So I, I don't know if that's the best idea to have uh, Miguel and Dante start us off. But again, it is it is a, it is a possibility. I'm not gonna gonna knock it there. So. If Dante is added, I do hope at the very least if he doesn't get the costume, uh, you know, to be kind of an appearance of an Alibriguez, I do hope he does have like the 24 hour quest or something like that. I don't know, or even 60 minute where he takes the appearance of the Alebrigues and like tries to fly around the kingdom maybe or something like that for 60 minutes or whatever 24 hours it doesn't really matter what he uh what he does but I I think that they really need to make sure that this appearance is present um either in animations or in a costume or something so anyways enough about Dante after that I think obviously Miguel will be added as one of the last characters there I'm thinking second last now how he will appear he will either appear as a boy um, with no face paint <laughs> or he'll have his like skeleton appearance and yes he's not actually a skeleton here but um, they, I know Hector did do the face paint for him, and it's pretty amazing. I would personally prefer the sort of skeleton look, but, you know, what? however they present him, I am literally totally okay with. No, uh, no problem, but I, I do hope something in the kingdom comes with, like, that face paint stuff whether it's Miguel or maybe a concession stand, but we'll talk about that a little later. So the very last character though, I do think of this limited time event is gonna be a villain. We have seen this in the past, but we haven't seen it for a little bit. So um, I can think of like, I remember my very first limited time event I did, which is the Snow White limited time event. Um, the Evil Queen was the last character in that one. So I think it would be kind of similar to that. I believe also past events I haven't participated in, for example, uh, the Lion King, I believe Scar was the last character in uh, in that limited time event that we all had to, or people had to collect for, I guess, because I didn't do it. Um, also, too, I believe the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland. I mean, again, there's there's a lot of obviously villains for collections, but just to name a couple of there for you guys. Um, yeah, I think that it would be really cool to see a villain as the last character we are collecting for. And if you guys don't know who this is, this is Ernesto de la Cruz. Yes, apparently the greatest musician of all time that killed his best friend and stole his songs to become famous. Yeah. 
let's forget him. But anyway, I do think he is an important character to have in the kingdom, uh, for sure. So I think he will be coming. Now, the battlegrounds, how that will appear, well, I'm thinking that maybe there's going to be a big stage and stuff like that. Because I don't know if you guys remember, but towards the end of the film, um, for Ernesto de la Cruz's like, big sunrise spectacular show, um, they did have a lot of the characters interacting on the stage and stuff. So I do think it would be great. Um, you know, if there was animations and stuff like that of the characters like singing or I don't know, having some sort of singing battle or whatever, I think there's going to be a lot of great animations there for sure. So we'll just kind of have to wait and see how the direction of the storyline goes, but I do think he'll be the last character, um, that we'll be collecting for. So it will be quite cool if we can add all of these characters. Now, tower challenge characters. I already said I'm thinking maybe Mama Coco wouldn't be a bad idea. Now, again, her appearance, I just don't know. The reason why I, too, like, guys, I just can't see her, like, wheeling herself around the kingdom in the wheelchair like this. And this is how she appears most of the film. I just don't see it. We never see her use her wheelchair. So I just don't know like how this is going to work if they add her in the kingdom right now. I'm like, uh, I just don't know. I mean, Grandma Tala, she, she walked, you know, and yes, she passed away and all that, but she's in the kingdom. She just walks around with her cane, but uh, Mama Coco doesn't do that. So I don't know how this storyline is going to go, to be honest, um, in terms of Mama Coco. Even though I wanted to add her here over Abuelita, I just don't, I just don't see how that's going to work, but... Anyway, uh, ideas for, I guess, the future and for a tower challenge is sort of my thought. Now, other characters could include more of the Rivera family. Obviously, you can see there Mama Imelda um, kind of in the middle, but I think that these are so just, again, some other characters for a tower challenge, just not really for the limited time event. Now, one that I'm really excited about to be a tower challenge character later Later is uh, Frida Kahlo and her very, very cool spirit guide. Her spirit monkey, I call him. So it, the spirit monkey breathes fire, does a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Anyways, um, I do think it would be very, very cool if we could add Frida at some point. I don't know if she's a uh, limited time event worthy necessarily, but I really do hope that uh, she comes during a tower challenge. She is very out there, very bold, very fun. She's always doing something crazy with fire and, and all kinds of stuff. So I think it would be quite cool if uh, she does get added during a tower challenge. We can't forget her. Now, um, let's, I guess, move on to, yes, attractions. Attractions are definitely a very big part of every single limited time event. Now, I, I have struggled with this, guys, so I do apologize. Um, you know, you guys will kind of have to pay a little bit more attention uh, to this section of the video. So I do think that sort of first and foremost, we're going to have... Um, I, I don't want to call it a museum so it's not really that and it's not really an attraction either but it will be something in the kingdom I think uh, and it's going to be called anyways remember me this is what I'm thinking this is something that does appear apparently during the uh, I think they said September 6th to like mid November at the Disney parks but it's not something that's there all the time and basically the celebrate it's a celebration to remember so this is the whole point of uh uh, Dia de Muertos, so basically appreciating or kind of celebrating the dead. So I'll read to you guys a little something that I have found sort of based off of this uh, Remember Me sort of celebration here. So it's a celebration to remember. So imagine if you could say hello to all of your favorite family members and friends even after they have said their final goodbyes. Or if once a year you could share a cup of hot cocoa or loaf of, I'm going to assume that's bread, with a great ancestor who you have only heard stories about. This is the idea behind Dia de Muertos, the treasured Mexican holiday that invites families and friends to come together to celebrate the loved ones who will always remain in our hearts even long after they have left our world. So to me, guys, I feel like this is like the Mexican maybe version 
of like Thanksgiving. Um, I do feel like we do do stuff like this at Thanksgiving time, but at the same time, like I feel like this is a little bit more spiritual, but I think it's really, really cool um, to learn a lot more about uh, this particular holiday, which is November 1st and 2nd, I believe usually every year. So very, very cool. So, during this popular heritage celebration, families and friends gathered to remember their ancestors with lively festivals, magnificent feasts, and all of the activities and things and people that the dead most enjoyed in life, which is actually really, really cool. Um, so this basically celebrates the holiday and accepts that death is a natural part of the human experience and how you know, to know how to cope, I guess, with all of it, and for the most part, sort of appreciate life and the people that are in our lives while they are still living. So I think this is really, really great, and I think this would be a great asset to our kingdoms. Now, um, if they kind of add one more attraction here that is part of the actual film, and I'll get into some other things in just a second here, um, the other attraction that's specific to the film is going to be, I think, Land of the Dead, or at least it's going to be the city, right? So that's where we're going to see um, the Flower Bridge and, or the magical, I should say, Flower Bridge uh, leading into the city. Because during the movie, that was such, I think that was probably one of the most magical moments of the entire film was when you kind of see Miguel walk across that bridge for the first time and then look up and see this entire city in front of him that he had no idea existed and I think it's just such a great moment I feel like maybe they could have like half of the bridge or something and then like as an attraction and leading into it is like that big city so kind of making it a little bit more exciting than they made Dr. Facilier's Voodoo Emporium from the Princess and the Frog limit time event there's so many things they could have done with that and they just made it the most boring attraction in the entire game so I do hope they do something really cool um, to sort of celebrate the land of the dead. So let's talk about, um, yeah, those coordinates. Those coordinates, since they did take us to Epcot and the Mexican Pavilion, this is where I think things are going to get a little bit more tricky, and I have struggled with this, and that's probably why this is going up a little bit late too. I know I still have the cold, so I apologize, guys, if my voice is still a bit messed up. Um, but pretty much this is where I've been struggling with the attraction. So in the Mexico Pavilion, uh, there is the pyramid, okay? Now this pyramid is kind of the focal point of the entire area, okay? So you can actually go inside of this pavilion, which is really, really amazing, and you can have dinner, yeah, you can have dinner. It's so, so cool. And the restaurant, I believe, that is inside of the pyramid um, is called the San Angel Inn. And again, sorry if my pronunciation of the restaurant is incorrect. Um, but anyways, it serves Mexican food and it's like there's a lot of like authentic dishes. And yeah, anyways, I think it's really amazing. And sort of inside of this, I guess, it's not really an attraction, but... Inside of the pyramid here with this restaurant, there's also two um, kind of the main attraction in uh, the sort of Mexican pavilion and stuff. It actually goes through, uh, I guess, the pyramid. So kind of unique as well that the attraction actually kind of goes by um, while, you know, while people are eating and stuff. Not everybody gets a view of it, but it is there. So it's, it's quite neat um, that there is an attraction with it as well. Now, there's the volcano, as you guys can see in the image in the background, which is absolutely amazing. And it really gives like quite the ambiance for sure. Like you totally like looking at the image, you'd be like, what? That's still gotta be outside. But it's not, it's all inside, but it makes you feel like you're outside. So very, very cool. And I think that this has to be added to the kingdom. Um, however they decide to do it, whether they decide to kind of have the attraction sort of, you know, or not, I guess not attraction, but have like, um, you know, maybe the waterway sort of around the pyramid or something, um, you know, so that actually kids in our, that come to visit our kingdom can actually ride around that. I think that would be really cool, but I don't know how they're exactly going to present this, I guess, as an attraction in our kingdom. So anyways, 
I think that would be really amazing if they do kind of add that. Now the other one, and this is where I'm not sure if they would actually add this um, in the event or they would add it after in a leaderboard event. So I will explain this right now. Okay, so we have got uh, this particular attraction, which is again the main attraction in the Mexican Pavilion here. And that attraction is called the Grand Fiesta Tour. So the Grand Fiesta Tour is now starring the Three Caballeros. So guess who is part of the Three Caballeros? Donald Duck. Yes, the Grand Fiesta Tour. Um, it's a boat cruise, so I believe that is the one that actually goes kind of like through the, the pyramid and the restaurant and stuff like that. At least that's my understanding. And... Donald Duck, um, Jose, and Panchito, they were not actually, I guess, in this attraction all along. They have been added, I guess, a little bit more recently. Now, if you guys are like, I didn't know that Donald had a Mexican side. Well, guess what? It, he he does, and he is part of the Three Caballeros. And this is a Disney, I guess, animated film. I think back in like I think, believe it's 1944. If I'm wrong, you guys can correct me um, in the comment section. But I believe that's when it was. And yeah, so I think that we could be seeing if this comes like as a leaderboard. Um, event attraction after the event which we've seen with like the great Goofini and stuff like that we've seen that or Barnstormer I guess it's called in our kingdom it used to be called the great Goofini and the name changed to Barnstormer but basically we got that attraction during a leaderboard event so I do think it's possible that we could be seeing the Grand Fiesta Tour as being one of those attractions now why because that would give us the option of Donald Duck uh, getting some new friends to the kingdom or giving Donald Duck just a costume. So could be quite cool to do something like that. Now maybe they won't have this attraction in the event, but maybe they will. It'll, it's kind of just up in the air. Uh, but again, based off of the coordinates and stuff, if they're kind of going more off of like attractions or things that are actually in the Mexican Pavilion area, then I think we will be seeing this attraction during the event. So again, it really just depends. Um, on what direction they decide to do. So yeah, I don't think the volcano is going to quite get its own attraction or anything. I think it will be something, again, that they include with the pyramid. So again, there are a whole bunch of other like restaurants and stuff that, you know, I was going to talk about, but I just think, like I have them written down here and we can maybe talk about it a bit more in the live stream and stuff. Um, if you guys want to know some more thoughts that I've had in terms of like, you know, expansions and stuff. But I do think those are the most sort of realistic things that they would add to the kingdom in terms of attractions, okay? So some are specific to the movie and some are specific to the actual park itself. So let's move on to concessions. So I do think we're going to be seeing the sombreros. So some of those hats will be very, very festive. And I think that we totally need it in our kingdom. Absolutely. Those kids visiting our kingdom need to be able to wear those. Now, the other thing is that we could see is like some sort of like face mask or face paint type of concession stand sort of like we've seen with like Timon and Pumbaa's um anyways we've seen kids sort of walk around with the their masks or whatever so I do think it's possible that we could be seeing uh like a face paint or again mask of the skeleton I was gonna say skeleton like Jack Skellington a skeleton Ah, anyways, yeah, it actually kind of looks like Jack Skellington a little bit. Anyways, having like that skeleton appearance, I think that'd be really, really cool. I think also too, like Dela Cruz's guitar. So having kids, you know, walking around with that. Um, maybe if there is some sort of like food, amazing food concession stand, that'd be great. Now the other one I thought, and, this, and maybe this is a little less likely, but I'd love to see an Ali Brilla's backpack. Yeah, I, I would like to see if they don't add Frida, Kahlo, I think they should add her little monkey as a backpack. I think it would be super cool. I, I miss the backpacks, guys. I really do. Like, I love the scrump backpack so, so much. I just want another adorable backpack like that that I can love seeing all my kids while coming to my kingdom. And I feel like the Adelaide Brigos, I'm not saying it right, I'm so sorry, but that backpack, um, Ali Briguez, I guess, sorry. Uh, Spirit Guide's backpack would be amazing. Okay, decorations. Uh, yeah, 
I think they need to have decorations in this limited time event. Please do not skip them like you did with Finding Nemo. Thank goodness I had Little Mermaid decorations to make up for it and I wasn't that upset, but I'd be very upset if they didn't add things like this. So I do think that those magical flowers and stuff, um, they're usually in the film. We saw a couple of scenes and I tried finding proper images of this and I just, I wasn't successful. Um, but you do see in the film, you see those flowers like sort of shaped uh, like kind of like a topiary a little bit like we see them with the treble clef and stuff um, but I think what would be really amazing is if they did topiary for this but anyways with those like orange flowers and stuff or at least the petals in the shape of like music notes or we I think we saw a guitar as well in the film so there's like a lot of different things that they could do but I hope they add something like that um, in the actual kingdom I think it would be amazing now the other thing that I would really like them to do is have a gold statue so sort of like what we've seen with I'm trying to think oh here's a good example Winnie the Pooh and Christopher Robin came as a gold statue I know we, a lot of us have got a couple of those maybe already, maybe some of us don't, but it's really, really cute and totally worth having out, especially for like your thrill zone levels, totally worth having one of those. Um, now, I think for this event, I think Dela Cruz would be quite cool because he does have like so many statues and stuff around, um, and especially in the film, they really do show that, so I think it would be quite cool if uh, there is. Now, in terms of gold trophies for the actual event, well, um, I'm thinking a guitar would be really cool, but again, there are a lot of different things they could do. Um, I did include here an image, and pretty much, you guys, like, this is inside of the Remember Me, uh, I guess the, I'm gonna call it the attraction for our kingdom that I think they really need to have. And I think this would be an amazing gold statue. And maybe you guys will agree or disagree, but I think it's super cool. And yes, I know it's a bride and groom, but it's apparently supposed to like symbolize, I guess, uh, love sort of living on even after life. So I think it's actually quite romantic and really sort of symbolic to, you know, yes, you know, the sort of whole point of the Day of the Dead, but at the same time, I think that this really is very specific as well to the actual film and all the romance that actually happens, or at least that storyline, um, you know, between Mama Imelda and Hector. I think that it's like there is, like, love in life and also, you know, in death. So it's just like love forever. So I do think it would be a really, really amazing uh, gold statue to have in our kingdoms. Now, obviously we could be getting some benches or lamp posts and all that kind of fun stuff. If they do a bench. I hope they do one that's like made of bones. I think that'd be very, very cool. Uh, not totally sure how that will work, but yeah, I, I think we need some more spooky, spooky stuff in the kingdom, I, I would be totally down for a bone bench. <laughs> Let me know if you guys agree with that. A bone bench in the kingdom. Super amazing. Okay, so again, there are a lot of other decorations, but I kind of narrowed it down to those few. If we want to talk about more possibilities and stuff in the next live stream, uh, yeah, we will definitely do that. So let's talk next about the parade float. So I think the parade float and again, I'm going to show you a couple of different images here of versions that they obviously can do and stuff. But I think that they really need to have the bridge, right, that goes to the land of the dead. So that magical flower bridge, I think that would be a great thing to sort of have um, on the parade float, right, as being kind of like the base. And then on top, I think there should be like dancing and waving skeletons and stuff. I think that would be really, really cool to kind of see that. Um, and then obviously the animations from like, okay, think of Scrooge's money bin. Um, I guess not the actual attraction, but if you see in the parade float for DuckTales, you'll see Scrooge diving um, sort of through his actual parade float which is supposed to symbolize his money bin. Anyways, and you can see the gold coins flying up from that. I showed it in uh, some of my streams and videos and stuff like that. Um, but I, I think that we'll see maybe some of these magical petals and stuff. I think we will see them sort of float down and disappear from the parade float. So I think that would be like kind of a really neat sort of animation that they could do. 
And yeah, I think the dancing or waving skeletons would be, again, super cool as well. So let me know what you guys think about that. Again, there are some images there. Now, I know there's some too that they've done at certain parks that are a bit smaller. And it's mostly just like, you can see like the Alegrigas there and stuff. I mean, we could get one that's really elaborate that, you know, has like the bridge and there's actually two parts to it. I've included that image as well. Um, but yeah, I think there's like a lot of different ways this parade float could go, but I think they could make it really, really magical, especially if they include something with the bridge. So that is my thought with it. Now, in terms of currency appearance and stuff and what we'll be getting uh, as tappers and stuff throughout the actual event. So basically, to you know, tap to get that main sort of character token for... Um, you know, for our characters to level up and welcome and stuff, as well as, like, we can get currency from that. I'm thinking it's it's kind of tough to say what the currency is exactly going to look like or um, what, I guess, we're going to be seeing in terms of what we have to tap every two hours. Like, there's going to be five things that we have to tap every two hours, right? So I'm thinking maybe that could be another opportunity if they don't add the concession for the Alibria's sort of backpack thing that I was talking about with the monkey. We could be just tapping Alibria's around the kingdom. That would be super duper 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 cool. I'd be very happy if we could have something like that. It'll definitely make it entertaining and I'll probably stare at those things so much, but um, yeah, just kind of to add some more color and some fun, obviously, to the kingdom. I think it would be absolutely fantastic. So, yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed sort of my thoughts for the limited time event. If there are anything that you guys can think of that you guys would like to add, obviously, and stuff in terms of concessions and um, decorations and characters and all of that, feel free to put your thoughts in the comment section below. Now I'm so excited for it. Now that I've done this prediction video, I'm like, please give it to me now. So I'm like, I really just hope that it is Coco coming to the kingdom. There's just been way too much hype the last like couple of days for it. I'm just like, I need it in my life right now. Yeah. It's going to be so cool. Um, so anyways, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Make sure to give this video a big Mickey thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Subscribe to Disney Girl if you guys are new and hit that bell for post notifications because you guys will want to know what is coming next to DMK first. And I promise you, I will have it. And yes, once Facebook um, or once the Facebook live stream happens for DMK, I will be going through obviously all of the details. We'll be watching it together and kind of breaking it down a little bit so uh, we can kind of analyze what's actually going to be happening. Because sometimes they don't tell us all the information, so we kind of have to guess some of it. So I'm really, really excited to uh, have that discussion with you guys in the next couple of days. So hopefully my sickness and my voice and everything hasn't um, been too, too bad today. I've really kind of pushed myself to do this. But um, hopefully it's been bearable to listen to. <laughs> I do apologize, and hopefully I'll be feeling better in the next day or so. It's cold. It's seriously kicking my butt right now. But you know what? I, I still hope you guys enjoy the video. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys for the next live stream. Bye!